Good evening. All right. So it's uh, thank you so much uh, for coming today. Uh, I'm very thankful. So uh, today we're going to talk about something very interesting. We're talk about uh, know how to love God. Okay. Now this is. Uh, I'm going to pray first to start, and then we'll get into it. But just keep that in your hearts and your minds. Is we're going to learn today how to love God. So let's pray. Uh, beloved God, we're very grateful and thankful that you blessed all of us here today. Uh, we're coming today with open hearts, and we really, really want to get to know you better. Uh, but more importantly, Lord God, one of the one of the things that we struggle with in life is learning or trying to figure out how to love you. When it, it, it's it's so difficult for us to figure out how to grasp how to love this amazing, omnipotent God. Uh, but today, I pray that uh, we'll learn two things in two ways uh, that we're able to love you better and love you more. We thank you so much for all that you've done. We pray all these things in the name of our living Lord Christ. Amen. Now, uh, we're going to start off with a very interesting verse, and everyone should know this verse. It's uh, probably one of the most famous verses in the Bible. It's in Matthew chapter 22, and it's verse 37. And it's kind of what Jesus is, what Jesus calls the greatest commandment, okay? And the greatest commandment Jesus gives, and I'm sure you have the verse here, it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And we've heard this one before, right? So love the Lord your God with all your whole, all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, okay? And this is something that we've heard many, many times, but the question I give to you right now is, like, what does that mean? To love with, like, all your heart, with all your soul, with all your, oh, just everything, how can you love God with this, right? And it's something that we all struggle with. Why? Because everyone struggles with the issue of, well, you know, I don't know how to really love God, or why is it so hard to love God? Why is it such a struggle for me to love God more or to love Him better, right? Now, there's one thing, if we go to today's message, that the theme is know how to love God. There's only one thing and one reason why we have a large, like a, just a big struggle with loving God. And this comes to today's key verse. It's Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. And it says, my people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you as my priests. Because you have ignored the law of your God, I also will ignore your children. Right? What does it say? People are destroyed for what reason? It's because we don't know. Right? It's a lack of knowledge. Right? One of, the th one of the reasons why we have such a hard time doing things in life, whether it's a job, whether it's school, is because we just don't know, right? If we knew, it would be easy. If we knew, we could do it. If we knew, it'd be so much better than it is right now. But the reason why we struggle so much is because we just don't know, right? Because imagine, why do you guys get like, why don't you guys get 100% on your tests? How many people go to school right now? Going to school. Why don't you get 100% on your test? The answer is because you don't know, right? It's like if you knew, you'd write the right answer. It'd be A, 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 C, C, D, whatever it is, right? You'd write it down. But why do you get it wrong? It's because you don't know. Why is your destiny changed? Because you don't know, right? Everything's about whether you know it or not. You go to work, you get fired from your job because you make a mistake. Why? Because you didn't know, right? It's just because you don't know. What is one of the biggest reasons why we struggle, for, you know, struggle to love God, right? Where you can say like every day, you're like, oh, God is amazing. Oh, I could feel him right now. Oh, he's just, oh, he's like tingling all over my body. God is so amazing. And that's why I never struggle. I never have problems praying for three, four hours a day. I never have problems with reading the Bible. And I understand every word in both Hebrew and Hebrew. Greek and English. I don't struggle, right? But the problem is, we do, okay? So today I'm going to talk about two reasons why we struggle, okay? Two reasons. So let's start with the first reason. Well, the overall reason is we don't know. So I'm going to, I'm going to change two things about us to love God better, okay? Number one is, we have to realize about one thing here is this. God, right? This God that we're trying to fall in love with. So my question to you is, when does he die? He never dies, okay? This is very, very easy, right? God is never ending. God is eternal, right? There's no end to God. But here's a very, very this, is, this is the crazy part. You guys all know that God doesn't end, right? He's forever. He's eternal, okay? But here's the crazy part. 2,000 years ago, like I'm 2,000, I want you to remember that in your head, 2,000 years ago, Jesus came. Now, when 2,000 years ago, Jesus came, something interesting happened was everybody was waiting for the Christ to come. Why? Because the moment the Christ comes, all your problems are solved, 
right? It's done. Jesus is here. It should be done. Everything, oh, it's the greatest thing ever. We'll have no more problems. We'll not, you know, we're not going to have any death. We're not going to have any like, countries that are going to be oppressing us. It's going to be the greatest thing. And all the Israelites waited for Jesus, waiting for that one moment, okay? Now, Jesus came. Now, what's the first thing I told you to remember is Jesus came when? 2,000 years ago. Okay, so think, you guys have to think about this carefully. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, but life goes on. It didn't stop. There wasn't an ending, right? We're all thinking in our head, there's, wait, there's, there's, isn't there an ending? Just think about this. When you guys go to work, what can't you wait for? The end of work. Right? You can't wait. You know, I know some people have music practice. If you practice music for six hours, what are you waiting for? You never, oh, never practice. Sorry, wrong person to talk to, right? Okay, but you're waiting for the end, right? It's true. Like, yeah. And then think about this. When you're super hungry, you're just waiting for your lunch break. When is class going to end? You wait for class to end. You wait for work to end. You wait for school to end. Sometimes you wait for conversations with people to end, right? There's lots of things you wait for in endings, right? Tons of things. Some people are even waiting for this service to end. I said it, I'm sorry, right? But you know what? I'm not blaming you, why? Because everyone's got something going on. Everyone's got something going on. We're waiting for endings because we think that when it ends, it's done. But the problem is this is, even in your life, things end, but it doesn't really end because you still have to live after. You still gotta live, right? Oh, I can't wait for this test to end. And after the test ends, you get 65% on it. Does, does the test really end or do you feel it for a long time? 65 and someone says do you want to eat I'm not hungry and your, your, your stomach feels like oh what am I going to do I got 65% and I studied and I got all these things everyone think about this in life is nothing really ends but the crazy part is we actually think to ourselves that even with God there's some type of ending how do I know What's the ending? The ending when we come to God is this. The ending is, oh, if I just believe, if I, if I find, oh, oh, I believe, I believe in Jesus. And you stop right there. And you're like, it's done. I've done it. No more. Great. My life, I'm saved. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go, I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to go drink, right? I'm going to go, you know, celebrate. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. And what happens is, even with our spiritual life or a life of faith, we're always thinking about endings. Oh, how long do I need to do this for? How long do I need to pray for? Do I have to pray every day? Do I need to read the Bible every day? For how long? When will it end? We're always looking for some type of ending, right? The ending is something we're always looking for in this God that's eternal. And if we look at even throughout the Bible, God is never ending. What does that mean? Everyone turn. I'm going to show you a, a verse today. We're going to take a look at the verse, uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. And for me, it's kind of a shocking verse. It's a shocking verse, okay? Has, has anyone here heard of the, the last days? The end times, okay? The end times, what does that mean to you? The end means the end, it's done. It's over. Okay, now listen to this carefully. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and 2 says, In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, which he's talking about Jesus, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom also he made the universe. Okay, verse 2, what does it say? But in these last days which means 2,000 years ago was what? 2,000 years ago was the last days. Now, how many of you are kind of confused? It's like, if his last days 2,000 years ago, then why are we still alive? Then why is it 2,000 years later, we're still living? Don't you think it's kind of a joke or a lie? It's like God says, this is the last days, but there'll be you know, several thousand years left. You're like, what? That doesn't make any sense. Why? Because our thoughts, the way we think, are very different from what God thinks, right? See, for human beings, we're waiting for an end constantly. It's got to, when's it going to end? When's it going to end? When's service going to end? When's prayer going to end? When's Bible reading going to end? When's Bible study going to end? And the answer is never. It'll never end. And for some of you, it's shocking. Like, oh, I have to do this forever? And the answer is, yes, you do. You do, right? 
The problem why it's so difficult for us to have this relationship with God because you're always looking for an end to something. There's no end if it's eternal, right? And for us, we're still thinking in our heads, well, but shouldn't there be an end? Because do I really need to struggle this much? Do I really need to pray this much? Do I really need to do this much? Well, it really depends on what the subject or what's, what it's all about. If it's just about work, there has to be an end. There has to be, right? Because no one wants to work forever. If it's talking about, you know, eating and then when's the next time we eat, there's got to be an end when we start to eat again. When it comes to school, there's got to be an ending to school, right? Everything's got to have an ending, right? But there's one thing in life, when you think about it, you would never want to, never want to end. What do you think that is? What's the one thing you would never want to end? And we're like, well, I don't know, because I would want almost everything to end, but there's only one thing. So let me ask you this question. Let's say all of you get married, and the wedding finishes, and then two weeks later, he's like, so is it finished? Am I done? Can I go home now? Is, there, is this done, right? Because uh, if, if it's done, I'm going to go back home. I'm going to go hang out with my friends, Right? If you get married, are you actually expecting an end? Do you really want an end? Do you want your husband to say, you know what? I only dressed up until we got married. But from now on, sandals, shorts, and a wife beater. And that's from now on. And you'd be like going, what? Like, what, what, what do you mean? Said wife beater? Why do you even call it that, right? What is that saying about you, right? So we're kind of sitting there like going, hey, that doesn't make any sense. Why, what, what do you mean there's an end, right? When it comes to the one thing that you want to last forever, what is it? It's love. Love is the one thing you never want to end. You never want your husband or wife to say, is it over? Is it finished? Because I'm done right? I'm done with you, right? And you sit there, you're like, what? Well, how did I marry her, right? The one thing you never want to end, but you want to get deeper and better with time is love. What is the cutest thing you've ever seen? It's either two things. One is a cute baby, all wrinkly and small and bald, and they're like, oh, it's so cute. And the second one is old people who are in love. They're still small, wrinkly, and bald. It's the same thing, right? They're the same thing. But if they're 80 years old and they're holding hands walking in the park, you're not thinking to yourself, uh, uh, like, I can't, they're too old. How can they be in love? You'd be like, oh, that's so cute. Just like two wrinkly babies hunched over with a cane, barely moving at like a meter, is, oh, that's so cute. When will they get home? No, I'm just kidding, right? Right, so you sit there, and the thing you're looking at is, yeah, it's true. When you look at people who've been in love for so long, we're envious, like, wow, that's amazing. And you think to yourself, don't you want to be in that situation too? You want to be there. The first problem we have is that we don't look at our life or relationship with God in terms of love, and you're always looking for an ending. And that has to change first. The first thing is, love should never end. It should be something that you just want to happen more and more. That when you see your wife or your husband that next year on your anniversary, you shouldn't be like, I'm so bored. Oh, he still looks, oh my gosh, what's wrong with him? It's more of, wow. I love him more than I did last year. I love her more than I did last year. Wow, this person's so amazing. That's what love should be, right? The first thing you have to get in your mind is the perception of an ending has to change. When it comes to you and God, love does not have an ending. Love is continuous, and love never ends, but it keeps changing. And that's the first thing you have to think about of, wow, this is how I have to change my relationship with God. Now, what's the second thing? right? Because God is forever. It's kind of a hint to the next one, right? So God is forever, right? We're supposed to love God forever, okay? There's no ending, and that's the first thing we have in our minds. And that moves on to the second point, right? We, we go back to that verse in Matthew 22, verse 37 says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your will, and with all your soul, with all your strength, kind of with, with everything that you have, okay? Now, this made me think a lot about, you know, what does it mean to love with everything that you have? Like, have you ever thought about that? Have you ever loved anything or anyone with everything that you have? Okay? And in life, there's actually two types of people that, that kind of like, when love ends, there's two types of people. 
okay? Like, for me, you know, when the first time I fell in, well, I didn't really fall in love because I was 11, right? Uh, the first time I uh, had, uh, first time I had, like, um, my first girlfriend, which is not really a girlfriend because it was, like, um, 11. So uh, I called her once, and I said, you want to go out? Like, yeah. You want to be my girlfriend? Yeah. I'm, I'm, so for, I'm like, me too. Let's, let's love, right? Okay. And then we never talked after that. It was so weird, right? But every day at school, I'm like, my girlfriend. And she's like, my boyfriend. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> right? And that was it. At 11 years old, it was, it was I don't know about you guys, but that's, that's like, I'm going to be honest with you, that's like over 30 years ago. That's like 30 years ago for me, right? That was a long time ago. That's what love was like 30 years ago, right? <laughs> the next year, I had a girlfriend, and the craziest part was we actually not held hands, we touched hands. It was like this, oh, we touched hands. And I was like, wow, this is so great. It was the craziest thing, right? And, you know, I was like, wow, this is so amazing. Now, in high school, high schools are interesting because you're looking for love in high school, but... Uh, uh, oh, okay. Wait, this is a little bit hard for me right now. <laughs> so I never had a girlfriend in high school because I had a god sister that made a bet with me. And uh, she went through a really bad relationship. We're in the same high school. And she said to me, Sky, promise me you'll never get a girlfriend in high school. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, I didn't know what I was getting into. I was like, all right, that sounds cool. And she's like, I won't do it either. I was like, all right, cool. And then she got a girl, she, had a, she got a boyfriend the next year, but I was like, oh, I can really keep this. So I kept this for like four or five years. Now, after it's done, I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a girlfriend now. Why? Because I'm 17, I'm an adult, and I know what real love is. <laughs> so in university, I was like totally looking for girls. Like, yeah, who's this? Who can I find? And there was this really cool Chinese girl, and... Uh, I'm not going to say her name, but, um, sorry. Um, and, uh, you know, we started talking a lot and stuff. And then one night she says to me, I like you. And I was like, oh my gosh, so do I. I like myself. No, I'm just kidding, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just kidding, right? So I was like, I like you too, right? And then for me, I'm this like this, this totally like stupid person, right? So I'm just like, oh, cool. So then she's like, She's like, I like you. I was like, I like you too. Okay, all right, cool, all right. And that's how it ended, right? And then later I found out she was like dating another guy. So my heart was broken and I was like, oh my gosh. And then my friend told me, it's like, dude, you weren't even dating. I was like, I know, but it still feels like it, okay, right? And uh, my heart was broken at that time, okay? The first time a person, a person gets their heart broken, but the crazy part was I get up again and you try to look for someone else, right? That's the first type of person, right? You go through a breakup, you go through something bad, and what happens is, oh, this is so terrible, and you try to look for someone else. Now, the second type of person is very different, right? The second type of person is that person you see that's in the movies, Right? Those people in the movies, those love stories that are just amazing, like they die for each other, right? And we don't really get it, right? It's like, Jack, don't let go. And he's like, don't let go. And she lets go. I don't know why, but she lets go. Like, oh, and he dies, right? So it's kind of crazy, right? She's like, he's like, don't let go. I think he really meant it. But she's like, okay, Jack, right? And he dies, right? And I'm like going, huh? And she never gets married again. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like what's going on? You're supposed to love him. And then she never gets married again, but she could have had him if he didn't let go, right? If she didn't let go, she would have had him still, right? We have these movies, he loves songs. Like I'm never, you know, what's that song um, by, 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 by Careless Whispers? I'm never, no, is that it? I'm never going to dance again. I'm never going to dance. Like, you know, think about that. This person had such a bad, bad experience with dancing, they're never going to dance again. Right? Like, you've got to think about this. These people fall in love so deeply that they're so broken, right? They have nothing left inside. They cannot love another person. And those are the two people. The first person loved, but they didn't love with everything that they had. 
with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their strength. Why? Because if you actually gave everything, what would you have left when it's over? You'd have nothing left over. Right? When we think to ourselves and we see these love stories in the movies and stuff and then how these people love each other so much, like Romeo and Juliet, what happens at the end, Minister Patrick? They both die. Right? Did they have to? Okay. Uh, thank you. All right. I, no would have been the proper <laughs> What was I looking for, right? right? But it's true. They didn't have to die. So we look at these and then for us, we're like, oh, that's so weird. Oh, that's so weird. Oh, why would you do that? You can live for another 50 years, right? Why? It's because we've never experienced loving with everything that you've got, right? As uh, Minister Patrick was talking about a video game, a video game talking about The Sims, you know, the games that I played when I was young, like I played games, well, I'm sorry, I didn't have like PlayStation. I had like uh, uh, the first Nintendo set, the first Atari set, the first Genesis Sega, Sega set, right? These are all 8-bit, right? And all it is is like a, a boxy figure, like the and the, the gun goes tuk, 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 tuk. and it's just going like this the whole time right and we played some of these games and the one thing that we loved about you know one thing that was very amazing about these games is is when you when you're on your last life right you got one life left right and you sit there and when you have one life left and if you die you start from the very beginning again how do you play like for some reason, your pupils dilate, you get your senses heighten, and all of a sudden you're playing this game like you've mastered it, right? And you're like, you do things in such an amazing way because it's the last life. When I played sports, just one time in my life, there was, I played basketball, there was one time in my life there was the last shot of the game to win the game. Like how desperate and how much, are you th how much are you involved with that last shot? Do you want to know if I scored or not? I'm not going to tell you. Because <laughs> it will ruin this example. <laughs> right? You have the last shot. What happens? You are so tuned in. Everyone's watching that last. Like there's nothing left. This is what it's like to love with everything that you have. Loving with everything that you have, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, if you've never experienced it, you're so involved, you're so into it, that you have nothing left after if it ends. That's what loving with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength is. There's nothing left over for, my, for, for basketball. There's nothing left over for other things in my life that even if it ended, it wouldn't make a difference in my life. It wouldn't be like, oh, no, my life has ended. Why? That's what happens, right? Why, you know, uh, when I was in Korea, in, like for five years, I did a lot of suicide prevention, like, speeches. And one of the biggest problems was people thought that this job they were getting was their entire life. If you don't get the job, you're worthless. And they didn't get the job, and they committed suicide. You didn't do well on that final test of high school, and you commit suicide. Why? That's your life. You have nothing left after. To love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, there's nothing left. There's nothing left. And if you don't have that person, you think this is the last person that I'll hold. And if you lose this person, it's the last person you see if you lose this person, there is nothing left in your life after. And this is where we go wrong when it comes to loving God, is we leave a lot for ourselves and we don't put everything in. Like this is it, this is the end. Nothing gets made when you do it halfway or even 70 or 80%. We have to realize is not just about this love that never ends. The real question is, if God was missing in your life right now, what would you have? Would, would you still say, oh, it's okay, because I still have school. Oh, I still have my job. Oh, I still have my family. Oh, I still have all these things. It means you have so much left over that's not given to God. If you want to fall in love with God so deeply, if you want to fall in love with God the way God wants, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your life, with all your strength, 
you leave nothing behind. That's all you have. It's like that last life in that video game. It's that last shot. It's that last moment you have with the person you can never live without. And I hope that all of us too, knowing how to love God is just as important as loving God. Because if you don't know, you're always stuck wondering why it doesn't work or why it's still the same. So I really pray and I hope that everyone here that will take these two things in our hearts and our minds. Don't look for the end. Look for love. And don't just look for love. You got to put everything in. And when you do this, you get everything back. Let's pray. Beloved God, we're so grateful and thankful that you blessed all of us here today. We pray, Lord God, that as we really think and reflect about our lives and our faith, what we see sometimes, Lord God, is our perception or the way we think of love is not correct. And we just do things the way that we think is right and we leave so much behind. God, you are the Alpha, the Omega. And in the end, it's just you and me. It's just you and me. I pray that all of us will leave nothing behind and put everything in so that this life of loving God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our strength will come into reality. We thank you so much for all that you've done. We pray all these things in the name of our living Lord Christ. Amen. He can show you what you want to go.